you guys thought I forgot about you, but I did not. If you saw Sunday, then you realize that I have family in town and I'm still with my family. So it only makes sense if you take a little time and spend time with your family, but I'm here. Good morning, Stephanie. God bless you. How you doing? Click tag and share Valerie. God bless you. How you doing? How's everything going? Miss Armstrong. Washington Serving Girl, I got your message. She said, where is the Car Chronicles yesterday? I miss you all so much. Monday and Tuesday. I miss you all. But this is Wednesday. Tracy Covington, God bless you. Feast, Kirk, it's so good to see you. How you been? There is the most amazing assistant pastor, the re-warrior, Delirium Michelle. God bless you. Gina Clofield is on here. God bless you. Jacqueline Thompson. It is so good to see you all. Click tag and share. It is Car Chronicles time. That's right. I am here. Rodney, God bless you. How you doing? How is everybody? Click tag and share. I took a little time just to be with my family, my friends, and my husband. Priscilla, God bless you. How you doing? Those of you who are on here, you're part of UD Church Charlotte. Please make a note tonight. Bible study is postponed. However, Sunday at 11 o'clock, we will be in service. Samantha S. Howard, it's good to see you all. I'm praying for you all. God bless you. Caress. Remember, we don't have Bible study tonight. God bless you. Robert, Pastor Robert, it is good to see you. Alicia Carr, you miss me? Well, I miss you too. I miss you all. When I'm not on here, I do miss you, but I do get the many, many plethora of emails and text messages that we need to eat this morning. And I understand that, but I had to really feed my family. Family. Sometimes I got to do that. Keisha Hunter. God bless you, Keisha Hunt. God bless you all, Minister Stefanetta. Again, a thousand people under the sound of my voice. Click tag and share and tell the people. Car Chronicles is on. I am so good to see you all. If I was in my car, of course, I would give you a beat just because I miss you. Come out Sunday at 11 o'clock, please. 2818 Queen City Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, where Apostle Fred and myself will be your pastors whenever you come through the door or click the button. Missy, it's so good to see you. Again, I'm going to reiterate, Shane, 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 what's going on? There is no Bible study tonight because I'm going to take this time to give my family a big old, big old, big old, big old bundle of love before they get on the road. God bless you all. Keisha, so good to see you. Keisha, I want you to understand that this morning I was praying for Josiah. Um, I was praying for your sons, both of them. The Lord had your sons before me. So please understand that I am praying. Sandra Pamerman, it's good to see you. Corey Baker, it's good to see you. Donna Jacob Smith, it's good to see you. Rufus, it's always a pleasure. I need you guys to understand you have to set your notifications because you will miss it if you don't set your notification because I jump on and so does the husband when we do coupling and things like that. God bless you all. Catherine Horn, it's so good to see you. Tara Adams, so good to see you. I love you all. That's right. Family is important. I cannot save the world and lose my family. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I have my hiccups because I do have them called children, big little people, but they are loving and in the land of the living and maybe standing on one foot because I might have cut the other one off because we have issues just like you. Cheryl Walker, it's so good to see you. God bless you, April. Let's go to the Word of God. Can we? We go into the Word of Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. I'm going to um, give you what thus said the Lord and get off of here and go have lunch uh, or breakfast with the family because it is that time uh, where we all are under one roof. And so that's very exciting. I want you guys to go with me to Ephesians 4. Can you do that? Get your coffee, tea, and me, Harriet Hunt. God bless you. Patrick is on here, I believe. Patricia is on here. Let's go. Hi from Augusta, Georgia. Deirdre Gilchrist. I see you. Maria Angie. God bless you. She's from New Jersey. God bless you. Cheryl said, it's still, you still watching Sunday? She said, it's so sweet. <laughs> Raymond Grant, it's so good to see you. God bless you all. Denise Patterson. Those are the names and the people that I can get, but I got to go to the word of God. Here we go. I just want to say again to the most amazing man on the planet, Apostle Fred D. Gooden. You guys have no idea. Mother Adele, how you doing? I'm just talking about your son. He is the most amazing man, and they are real. There are some wonderful men in the world, and God happened to bless me with one, and God's going to bless you with one as well. You single ladies, I'm praying, please, I ain't leaving y'all out. Y'all always going to be my heart. Y'all always going to be my friends. God bless you all. To the men, you too, brace yourself. 
because it's time because rings are still falling. The Holy Spirit told me that rings are falling and I didn't know that I was going to be in that number, but they are still falling because God shows them to me. God bless you. Let's go. Here we go. Ephesians 4. Let me read for you. I'm going to be reading for the ESV because I need you guys to get the full understanding about what is being said here because it's going to make all the sense of the world to you. Yeah. Someone says you ain't got no makeup on. Nope. I don't have a problem going on here with no makeup because I think I think God bless me with pretty decent skin. F. Hawkins, God bless you. How are you? Let's go. Ephesians 4, go to 21. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. Now, I'm going to start there. If you're coming on, we're at Ephesians 4, ESV, going down to the 21st, stopping at the 32nd. You have to get the understanding because sometimes uh, theologians and real deep religious people take the word of God and they make it so, um, it's like irrevocable in your understanding like what are they saying and god has given me the gift of transparency but a simplest that people can understand from all walks of life why would i confuse you if i really want you to get free doesn't that make sense why would i confuse you with a whole bunch of words and i just simply want you to look free <laughs> marceline prophet i love you so so he's saying this now he, he says now pay attention it says assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Now, this is where it gets good. Everybody could relate. To put off your old self. That means everyone who you, you know, everybody got a problem with who you used to be. You were good and drunk. Not drunk, but you was good and drunk. Drunk means eh, a little bit of wine. But no, you were Hennessy drunk. Like drunk, drunk, drunk. Inebriated to the point where you, you know, you ever woke up in your vomit? I, I, I don't drink. I'm not, I'm not knocking you, but I'm saying it's, you drink for celebratory purposes. You know, you, you drink because it's, it's a, yeah. But I'm talking about the good, good, good. I'm talking about the drunk. It's like you can't wake up without Hennessy. You can't go to bed without Hennessy. Whatever it is, Crown Roy, whatever is your drink of choice. That means you drink it so much until water is not your friend. I'm not talking about you weed smink. Listen, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking nobody. These, these are things that I've never done. That's just me. I'm talking about those of you that have an addiction that you no longer have control of. It may, I'm talking to all you sex addicts. Yep, because they're real. They're very, very real. That means that you can't get, the, your flesh has always got the best. I don't care. There are women, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get a little deep. There are women who are addicted to sex, just like men. You can't even have a good relationship because you don't even know how to keep your flesh together. I'm talking about all of you, 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 you. Everybody that has an addiction. Okay, lies, you ain't exempt. You lie about everything. You lie about the weather. When we see that it's sunny outside, you say that it's raining. You lie. Everything is a lie because you want to look good. Hold on. I'm, hold, it's okay. You individuals that you cannot even get. You're, you're nasty. You're evil. You're mean. you just cantankerous. You're strifeful. You're bitter. I cannot stand to be around a bitter person. Bitter people get on my nerves because you could be like, oh, that's a cute little baby. And they say, your baby is ugly because I don't like the mother. That's the type of people that I can't stand to be around. You always got something to say. I ain't going to repeat that because somebody just went up the timeline and said that was her oldest daughter. I ain't going to repeat that. I'm just saying. And so I want you to put off your old self, which belongs to your former mannerism of life. And it is corrupt. Through deceitfulness, your deceitful desires, and what God is saying is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is where it starts. And to put on the new self, okay? Create after likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, hold on, because we grew up and they say holiness is right, right, Josh? Holiness will always be right. But what type of holiness are you speaking about? Are you speaking about the type of holiness that you don't believe that I'm holy because uh, my skirt is not a certain length? Do you believe that I'm not holy because I choose to wear makeup? Do you feel that holiness isn't right because I don't have my head covered? They're not going to like me today. I, 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 am I not holy because... The most folks that I have now, this is my truth now, because I grew up with a father that said holiness was right, but had a mistress 
and the girlfriend. I see. I grew up around. See, this is why God taught me His way and not man's. I want to know about the person that's so holiness. You so holy until folks can't make a mistake. You're so perfect until you have a problem with the homosexual, but you can't even minister to him because you're too busy looking at the lifestyle. Holiness is right, but yet if God told you to minister to them, could you? No. I'm talking about though someone said true, true. That's my son John. True, true. I'm talking about the person that's so super righteousness until you are always wrong. God, I want to speak to those people under the sound of my voice because you kind of make us a little uncomfortable. It's not that your holiness disrupts us to the point where I'm not saved, but baby, watch my fruit. Someone said, bring it. Go on and watch my fruit. Go ahead with your long robes and your cross and your, go ahead. You wear an ephod. I get it. I get it. But God says, I'm doing a new thing and they got tattoos and nose rings and I'm doing a new thing and they got ripped jeans and they, their verbiage is not like yours to thousand two hundred folks under the sound of my voice saying true but god is doing a new thing now it, it, this is what the word of the lord said because most of you don't even understand what god said therefore having put away all falsehood let each one of you speak the truth of his neighbor most of the lies that i know <sighs> don't look holy bishop west most lies that i know sometimes Okay, y'all get it? Samantha S. Howard said, thank you. Everyone is saying thank you. Facts, facts, facts. Because you have to understand my holiness is right, folks. You don't even know what holy is yourself because your fruit ain't bearing no kind of witness because they look, look like everybody else in the sanctuary. Hmm? Super right, Mother Adele said. And so put on all falsehood. I want you to speak the truth of your neighbor. You too holy until you can't do that. For they... We are members of one another. Yeah, that means that a little bit of your daughter that you don't like is in you. A little bit of your son that you can't stand is in you. A little bit of that person that you're judging, you forget you used to be just like them. Hear me. And so we are all members of one another. But even though you got me bent, I'm going to be angry, but I'm not going to sin. Now, 2,300 people are the sound of my voice. We all can get a little bit from that, right? We're going to be mad at your ignorance, but we ain't going to punch you in the face. That's basically, someone said the realist is speaking. That's basically, uh-huh, someone said, please teach to the church, Corey Baker. Uh, that's basically what we're saying. Uh -huh. uh, we're saying that we're going to be mad. But we ain't going to punch you in the face. Michelle, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Where's well, Apostle Fred? Listen, we're going to be mad at you. But the Holy Spirit in me going to save you from that jackass whooping. Y'all don't like my verbiage. Log off and come to the church so we can have a whole lot of fun because I'm giving them the daily dose of antidote called laughter because the Bible that I read said is good like medicine. So let's do that. It says, but I ain't going to hurt you. And give no opportunity to the devil. It also says, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. It's funny because most real super religious folks that I know, they still angry. <laughs> They're still mad at their daughter. They still mad. They still mad about stuff that happened a long time ago. Did you know that there's somebody? Someone said you walking heavy this morning. Do you know that there is somebody right now that got thrown out of a church because they wanted to know who the baby daddy was? One thing about super religious folks, they nosy. They so nosy. The reason why super religious folks is nosy, Bishop West, is because they want to know all your stuff but forget about theirs. God, they want to know because super religious folks are very judgmental. That's why they watch you like they do because they want to see. Is that holy? Is it holy? Someone said you speaking this morning. Lord, help me not punch them in the face. Alicia, you must know it. Maria said, say it. ATL Georgia, what's going on? And so since I'm not going to let the sun go down on my wrath, I'm going to sleep real good tonight, tomorrow, and forevermore. And give not opportunity to you. It says, let the thief no longer steal no more. Hmm. So now you can hopefully put out your good jewelry. Have you 
ever had somebody steal some stuff? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell on myself. I remember when I was a little girl back in the day, I asked my mom. No, it was my mother because she gave me just about everything. I asked for some crazy reason. I simply asked my dad, can I have some money for some bon ton potato chips? I'm going way back in Brooklyn. Remember bon ton potato chips, the barbecue kind? Those were the good kind. And he told me, though, my brother, remember Kodak camera had that little black thing with the gray top and you could put the fume in there before all of this stuff came out. But my brother used to put subway tokens in there. See, I'm going back to my Brooklyn days that had the N and the Y on it. So what I did is I went in there and I took a subway token because it was four quarters, but it was in a token. That's what you used to get on the train back in the day. And so I went and I got me four bags of bon ton potato chips. Why are y'all laughing? And so everybody has done something, see, even as a child. But God said, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to have that behavior being an adult. Now, instead of you stealing, God says, go get a job. <laughs> yeah, like I said, sometimes people say, that's not good enough. James Brown, what's up? God says, instead of doing that, instead of going in your mama's pocketbook, child, wake up your teenage son and your teenage daughter. Hello to my replay people and those of you who are internationally part of the movement. Instead of doing that, I need you to go get a job. Somebody on the side of my voice need to roll over and tell Travis Wood, God bless you, how you doing? You walk in when I'm walking heavy. You need to wake up and tell your son, get up. I'm not paying another bill. It's time for you to get a job. Tell your daughter that want to look good with her good old bundles with your rent money. Hold on, please pay your rent. I need you to get up and, and pay your own cell phone. No, I'm not buying your bundles. Instead of laying up with her, would you please just go get a job? Instead of laying up, ladies, you know you fine. And you really don't like him. But you with him because you don't want your rent. Child, you don't like that old man. He's 93 years old. But your rent got to be paid. No. Get a job. Get a job. Get a job. He said, practice this no more. Get up and get a job. He said, let him labor. Do honest and good work with his own hands. That he may have something to share with anyone in need. That, me, that he may have what he needs to share with anyone. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth. But only such as good for building up, as it is fit for the occasion, that in may that in it may give grace to whoever hears it. So basically, what he's saying is, what I want you to do is use this very thing that you just lied on somebody about. Use this very thing that you are manipulating people with. Use this very thing that you said something very derogatory or ill. Can you please use your mouth to uplift, uplift people instead of breaking them down? It, it, it means that, mom, I'm going to say this and you're not going to like what I'm saying. You are too hard on your daughter. You are too hard on your son. You guys are too hard for each other. That means why can't you just find it in your heart to say good job? Why can't you find it in your heart and your daughter is trying or your son is trying to say, you know what? You're doing a good job. Instead of taking your mouth and tearing your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your community down, why can't you lift them up? If you're supposed to be such a good, good, good Christian, why would you spew is so evil in rhetoric? It basically is saying, if you are a new person, why are they still seeing your old ways? George said, so good. God is saying this. He's saying for the occasion, she graduated and you can't say congratulations. She, 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 she had a child. Oh, that ain't her baby daddy. Well, she ain't married. Well, beautiful baby. I'm glad you made the choice. Sometimes people just need encouragement. And the best encouragement comes from people that you love. Well, you ain't going to get it. You may as well go and get over it because it's just not in them. Please stop waiting around for them to say, good job. Do not give, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to stop there for a minute because this grieving of the Holy Spirit is when you know something is wrong, but you become habitual in doing it. That means you know that it's wrong, but you do it anyway. Hey, Anita, that means that you don't care anymore. You don't care anymore that everything and all the fruits of the spirit that God gave you, you consistently do it. But yet still you find yourself just saying, God, here I go again. God, here I go again. That's a good place. 
But when you get to the place where you don't even have, it's called repubit. A repubit spirit and a repubit mind does not care anymore. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm doing it. I don't ever want to be put in that position because I stay on my face. I'm going to say this. Do you know that some people have a reputable mind? That means that they, don't, they know it's wrong, but they don't care. They, I, I don't, they don't care about how you feel. They're going to do it anyway because it's a, it's a high level of selfishness and pride conglomerated together. It's so wrong and they don't care. It's people that will say, I don't care. I don't care. So the Bible said, you don't even understand that when you grieve the Holy Spirit, it makes him sad. It makes him get to the place where he says, oh, did you know that Jesus Christ, him crucified, had feelings? If he didn't have feelings, why are they the fruits of the spirit? It makes sense. And so the Lord is saying, please don't grieve me. But whom you were sealed from this day of redemption. Redemption means redeeming. It means I've got to go and I've got to fix what is broken. I've got to go back and get it and fix it, make it new. It says redeem it. He said, let now, this is where it gets good. We're going to get out of here. Now, I'm going to talk to you with super folks, super religious folks. This is you. You know, they got super fruits. They got super saints. I want to talk to y'all. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger. And calamity or calamity. Slander. Oh, that's a good one. Slander. Some of the most judgmental people are slanderous because they watch everything you, you do to run back and slanderize your name. 2,600 people. All of that, it says, let it be put away from among you. And among you, please, all of that malice. Malice is when you're doing something or you're plotting against someone and you're being malicious those condescending people <laughs> condescending this is i'm gonna stick a dagger in your back but i'm gonna use a little bit of honey to get it through your vein god it's it's i don't want folks like that around me mm -hmm. and god says please be kind to one another tender hearted watch this someone put the word tender hearted under the comment section because i'm gonna show you something tender hearted mm -hmm. i want you to forgive one another as god in christ has forgave you Put the word tenderhearted under there because I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind and it's going to hurt your feelings, but I guarantee you it's going to save your life. Put that word up there because most people don't understand how come you got cold-hearted people. I'm going to say this because I've got to say it and I'm not going to yell it out. I want you to get it understand it. Tenderhearted people are now cold-hearted saints. Mm. Tenderhearted people. They are cold hearted because the Bible says the love of mankind shall wax cold in the last day. There's so many cold people because at one point in time they were tender hearted. Now, where are all of you? If you're on here, folks don't know who's giving the angry faces, but go on, give the angry faces right now so we can say, God, please deal with them. Their heart has become cold and they were tender hearted folks at one time. Your mama want to help you, but you hurt her so much until now she done done more than God a heart with all diligence she's angry understand that we okay now here they go now they, okay now it's a whole lot of okay see these people were taken advantage of these people were um maliciously slanderized these people gave you a loan and you didn't pay it back but yet and still you went and got a whole outfit and went on vacation these people are mothers and fathers that help their children help their best friend and you did a wrong these individuals are people that was once in love but fell out of love because they took all your good information and all your things that you did and they ran off with somebody else god bless you uh, um, these individuals were once tender-hearted people, as Apostle says, a pure-hearted man in a cold-hearted world. If you allow me for a period of time to let you know that uh -huh, you, you, your, your change bothers people, it does. I have to say this, and you, you, you're going to read what it says later, but I want to say the new you bothers you. The new you bothers individuals that are around you. Now, I've got to bring myself into this equation since 2,700 people are looking at me. I want you to please stay the course because the new you bothers people. The new you bothers folks because what they're doing now is they're trying
trying to uh, get to the place where they want to see is this new individual really put on uh, a new man. Is a new person put on a new woman. Is the new person, see what they're doing now is they're testing you. Now I'm going to bring myself in the, it, listen to me. Someone said talk, uh -huh, Apostle Jay. I want you to understand something. Uh -huh. As I sat down. As I sat down and I begin to take Sunday and put it in the crevices of my memory bank because that is a monumental time in my life that I never wanted to go away. I relive Sunday over and over and over again. I simply get all of the videos. I get all of the comments and I'm still, we are still getting congratulations. As I placate this opportunity to be wed or be a wife, watch it because y'all really don't know the story yet. Hold on. It's coming. It's coming. Um, most of you under the sound of my voice saw it. I, I even had a young lady say that back in her, uh, while she was watching the proposal, her daughter, um, who was 15 years old, began to cry. Uh, see, now God is saying, now this is the season uh, when new things are happening, transforming the lives of the listener. Uh, some folks are getting engaged right after me. Hold on, because God showed me rings are still falling. Watch this. Someone said to me, uh, what I need you to do is put your marriage certificate in my inbox. Who you talking to, nigga? Yeah, I said it, please. The sun didn't go down on my rap, but we gonna get an understanding. I said, now, hold on. Now, this individual really doesn't know me, huh? What happened was, someone say, what happened? Michelle, Eddie, good. Apostle Fred, y'all all saying that good. What happened was, they made a phony profile picture, and they said, we need to see your marriage certificate, huh? Simultaneously, when that was going on, huh? A woman said, the way y'all date is Christians, eh, I don't really care for it, huh? She must be so bitter and angry, huh? So she doesn't understand the process of love her. She's so busy saying I don't and she will never hear I do. Now watch it. They put it in my inbox. So, and why are y'all laughing? Come on. Someone said Sunday was crazy. Come on, y'all. It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. And so what happened was, y'all said what happened. They put it in my inbox. Huh? Thereafter, what I did is I went on my phone huh? and I saw the same message. Huh? I said, now who is this nut? Huh? It was somebody that was in my past long time ago huh? that now begins to challenge what God is doing in my life. Huh? Now the old Jamila back in the day, they knew someone is saying, why? She should have called me. I know Andrew Coward. I know, baby. I know him. So hear me. Understand God transformed me because I, I did write the book, The Death of the Angry Black Woman. See, they knew who I was because they know good and well. If you poke me long enough, that old chick from Brooklyn go get up. Understand in Brooklyn, we have a saying that Biggie Small said, squeeze first. Next questions last. And so as I begin to sit with my family and we were so excited, I begin to see this religious nut. I begin to see this person that think they got all of the answers that really don't know at all. Challenge the new person that is standing before you. I begin to get my mind ready and say now what I'm going to do. I know I got to go to Jersey in a couple of months. Hold on. Wait a minute. I am going to Texas. I got a conference. I think I'm going to knock on their door. Oh God. And God begin to say hold on. You a new creature in Christ. Y'all ever looked at somebody and say, y'all better be glad God saved me. Mm -hmm. I begin to say now what is going on as I begin to share it with my husband. I begin to tell him they got the nerve. See, I'm going to say this because super religious folks uh, that got all the answers are so busy watching you uh, until they forget to watch their self. Uh, they too busy having babies on their wife. Uh, and years down the line find out, oh shoot, we've been married for 23 years and you got a daughter out of marriage? <laughs> you better be glad God saved me. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. Uh, show us, so what? Uh, hear me, 2,900 folks under the sound of my voice. Uh, folks better be glad God saved me. Uh, if you are like this, if you ever been confronted with ignorance, uh, you better be glad God saved me. Uh, some of your sons is walking around through the grace of God. Uh, some of your daughters still got a good weave uh, for the grace of God. Some of you, you better understand, you better be glad. God save me. Understand that they don't want to believe that it's you. They don't want to believe that God is indeed blessing you. They don't want to believe that you actually are the person that went to jail. That God blew on and said, hold on. You on your way to jail. Oh, that sounds good. They don't want to believe that God transform you, huh? that you're no longer a bit of Betty, huh? you no longer a Doubting Thomas, huh? you ain't the old person you used to be, the Bible says to put on 
the new man and take the old one off. Um, sometimes people can push you uh, to go back to who you used to be uh, and put on the old man that punched you in the face. Uh, oh God, I, I used to say it all the time and somebody corrected me, but I feel it raising up. I hope the Lord anoints me to punch you in the face. But since I'm not that person and neither are you, uh, folks will take a balloon uh, and take a pen and poke it every day. Uh, they don't believe that is you because God saved you. Um, I met the Redeemer. Aren't you glad you met him too? Huh? Oh God, someone said, my God, my God, my God. Huh? They don't like it because you're engaged, Dahlia Ashley. They don't like it because uh, George put a ring on it. They don't like it because uh, they wish they knew the whole story. Hold on, stay tuned. You're watching, you're going to hear it. Huh? They can't believe that you ain't the drunk you used to be. They can't believe that the whore huh? I got found salvation. They can't believe. Huh? Yeah, that's right. I don't want to do this no more. Going back to your wife. I'm sorry. In fact, Side chick, write a letter and say you're sorry. It ain't like she don't know who he is. They can't believe that God healed you from cancer. Folks just rubbing their eyes. Felicia May saying, I can't believe that there's a new person out there that now smiles when depression was glooming and dooming. They can't believe that God said that you will be a new creature in Christ. Watch this. It kills me because most of us are having a Paul on the road to Damascus experience. Yeah, that's right. The devil can't believe that you really are that happy. The enemy is laying wait, seeking whom he shall devour. I think someone said, yes, God. I think that I'll devour Michelle today because God, God has ordained the re-warrior for such a time as this. God took Fred from a place and stuck him in a new place. And folks still can't believe. Go on, put your story up there because the Bible that I read, we just read it, said that we are all one body experiencing the same thing of God. And what we are experiencing, we experience the newness of Christ. How can you take new wine and put it in a wine? skins. You can't do it. See, what they want you to do, baby, they want you to burst. God, they want you to burst open because huh, God doing a new thing huh, around old folks. God huh, God is doing a new thing huh, around your haters. God is doing a new thing around folks that's just not going to celebrate you. Huh? God is doing 3,000 folks under the sound of my voice. Go tag and share. Huh? God said a new thing is coming and rings are still falling. You are going to be in that number. Uh, God said new things. Someone said, wow, talk good. George, thank you. Huh? God knows God said I'm doing a new thing see the problem is that's right where's Kent and Jones when I need him he doing a new thing with all this stuff going around why is she blessed during the pandemic why Travis Wood did you turn the key to a wonderful five bedroom house during the time when folks ain't got no job man why did God heal you in the middle of a pandemic called Coronas and you've been struggling with chemotherapy God said because my new things I always cannot understand he said now what I've got to do. I'm, I've got to meet them and not. I said, you're mad. 3,000 folks under the sound of my voice. And so as a son, might have went down on my wrath. I cut a cake yesterday that saved my life. Y'all don't understand that God says I'm doing a new thing. Paul was on the road to Damascus. He was. And something happened. The the Bible said that he was knocked off of his beast. See, when God is doing a new thing, he will knock you down to lift you up. See, y'all got to get it in your mind. It says renew your mind. Be you transformed, watch this, by the renewing of your mind. Most of your mind ain't renewed. That's why you're still in old ways. But you got to understand that you got the new thing going on around folks that see you. The way you used to be. I'm not the person that I used to be. Because if I was, I put out all a junk. Hold on, I tell on myself. See, that's why God has ordained for transparency because folks want to tell on you. But if you tell your testimony, how God, how God made it make me over. You ain't got to worry about it because God says, I'm making you over again. Have you ever gotten sick of yourself? Some of you get yourself ready because God says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you yourself. He said, now Paul was on the road to Damascus. He was. And God knocked him off his beast. Some of you being knocked down so God can lift you up and present you new to the world. God knows. So he was knocked down off of his beast. Watch this. The Bible said three days. Michelle, 37. Do it for me, please. Three days, God knocked him off of his beast. He knocked him off of his beast. And said, this man came, Ananias, and said, go and give him everything that he needs. See, when God knocks you down, he knocks you down. When well, you can't see what's going on, he knocks you down, and you cannot see certain things for a season. Have you ever been so bad until people say, you really didn't see who you was back then? When God is making you over, 
you are not the first to see the transformation. Uh, the folks around you see it. Huh? That's why they don't like what they see. Somebody preached that Sunday. They don't like what they see. Huh? They don't like it because they get a glimpse of your change. Huh? They don't like it because you got a glimpse of happiness. Huh? They don't like it because they see a glimpse huh, of what is God is doing. Huh? They don't listen. Your harvest is coming, huh? and they see one grape. Huh? They know that the harvest is about to fall. Huh? See, that's what happened to Paul on the road to Damascus. Huh? He knocked them down and blinded him. He not, listen, he blinded him because uh, you don't even understand what you're about to see. Uh, and God says they see it. Uh, 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 judgmental folks are watching you uh, because Wesley is so stupid. He said, I'm sowing my $37. Now, they don't see uh, that God is doing a good thing. They don't see it. Uh, God said, you're about to see it. Uh, and the reason why you're about to see it is because I am transforming your old ways. The word of God said that Ananias came and he said, listen, I've got to prepare. Hold on, wait. You want me to go to the killer? Hmm? Yes, I do. Hmm? See, everybody, I preach that well. Sir. Everybody needs an Ananias doing transformation. Huh? God said, the woman that used to talk about you call mama. Huh? Y'all ain't going to talk for a minute. Huh? Hold on. The, 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 the good, good friend. Hold on. Huh? Something going to happen. You change. <laughs> well, I hope so. I don't want to be the same old person. You acting funny. Those are the words that people use doing transformation. You act in funny and you change. Wait, hold on. Here's another one. Hey, Twinette, hi. This is another. One. You think you all that now? <laughs> you think you all that now? Oh, 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 oh. Now you got it. Oh, oh, now. Oh, she got a car now. And she. Oh, she got that. He got that. He got a car now. Now he don't. Have. It's funny because even sometimes your your own parents say, "Oh, so you." I remember this young girl called me and I, and my heart broke because she was telling me that her mother does not like her. And I said, I don't understand how that's possible. We love our children and, and, and but we don't like them sometimes. And that's the truth, right? Uh, Erica, I love you, sweetie. And so you got to understand that they, they, they love you. They're your parents, but they don't like you right now. And so transformation <laughs> folks are bothered by it because uh, sometimes transformations happens uh, to people we connected to. Huh? And and they don't understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And so she said, my mother, she said, I cannot understand it. And then another young lady said that her own biological mother is taking her to court. Do you know doing your transformation? They cannot believe that you were the child that they bore. That is now so differently because God said, doing transformation, a whole lot of folks are not going to see. And so Paul on the road to Damascus and Ananias said, go to him. Yes, God, as painful as the representation is I will help them and so doing transformation season huh, God will ordain somebody huh, to know exactly who you used to be huh, to come in and be the ram in the thicket huh? 3,000 folks under the sound of my voice huh? the ram in the thicket is coming huh, and they ain't gonna be they will not be attached to your bloodline hmm? hear me huh? understand someone said I need the word of God your transformation is here your change will bother them huh? you are a new creature in Christ huh? all things are passed away and behold everything around you is about to be new huh? they don't like you because you are brand new huh? and folks don't understand you think you all that huh? well God saw that Listen, listen, don't, don't, now don't throw me under the bus. God saw fit uh, to bless me. Hold on. Huh? They don't like you because you're brand new. Huh? You don't understand that God decided uh, this is my season. This is my day. Huh? Don't get upset. I need you to pray. Rejoice with me. Huh? Give me attaboys. Congratulations. Huh? But they ain't got it in them because uh, their hearts are cold. Hearts are cold and evil because uh, they don't understand the blessings of God. Well, listen to me, D. Braxton. You don't understand the blessings of God because uh, you're sorrowful what God gave you because uh, you didn't do the right thing now. Um, the blessings of God make you rich 3,000 folks and add no sorrow um, and because you was in your own flesh uh, you're in a sorrowful place uh, but they ain't got nothing to do with me. Hear me. God said they have a problem with you because of your brand new. They got a problem because God transformed you. I need you to understand this, please. Proverbs 18 and 2. Y'all don't even know it was on there. Listen to me. 3,000 folks under the sound of my voice. I'm going to read it to the ESV because I need y'all to understand this. I'm seeing for my brand new because it feels good. It says, a fool. Don't tag and share. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Oh, God. 
Hello, fool. See, fools, someone said, this is fire. Listen to me. A fool ain't going to take pleasure in understanding your season. God, a fool ain't going to take pleasure in a new thing that God is doing. A fool, no. Fools don't like it because their opinions won't allow them. Well, I think this. Okay, they logged off now. They mad. I, I, I think that. Well, well, you, wait, show me your marriage. Nigga, if you don't go somewhere and play in traffic and worry about paying child support and the child that you had outside of wedlock with your wife, you better. And ch ch was that shady? God forgive me if it was a little shady, but yeah, yeah, he's still working on me. You don't understand that Proverbs 18 and 2 said that. Pastor Grooms, it said it. It said, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, huh? but only in expression their opinion. Huh? Their opinion ain't needed. Hear me, huh? Opinions are like a booty hole. Everybody got one. Please use it. Wash your hands and worship. Did I say that? Yes, I did. You don't like my verbiage, but it's okay. Hear me. Someone said deep and powerful. They want to understand. Well, one thing about the the mind blessing miracles of God, they're understandable and they can be very irrevocable. Huh? They're irrevocable because you ain't got the power to give it, nor do you have the power to take it away. Huh? And folks need an answer. They I want to understand. What do you mean? They can say, if you don't go somewhere, go somewhere. Well, I'm going to get off of here because God said the new you, yeah, it, 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 that transformation, it's bothering people. It's Jan Brown. It's bothering folks that um, uh -huh, you are in love. It's bothering folks that I'm not going down to the doctor like I used to. Uh, it, it bothers them that you went from four pills to now one. It, it's bothering that you was depressed, but now I'm okay. It's bothering because you lost a little bit of weight. And thank God. Everybody that's losing weight, I'm happy for you. Child, I'm trying to be in that number. It bothers them that you in a new place. Uh, it bothers Bothers them because the new you will bother folks. Yes, it will. And God says, this is what I'm doing now. Hmm? Terry, what's up? He said, I'm transforming people right in the eyes of people with an opinion because I'm doing a new thing. The new thing is good, Nakia. It's good, Leslie. It's good, D. It's good. And God is saying, listen, they want you to explain what I'm doing. <laughs> If that ain't just arrogant, I want to know. I want to, no, you wait like everybody else. If God allows me, some of y'all get blessed. Don't tell nobody nothing. Give them a glimpse. They already see what God is doing. Child, that ain't no foundation. And the glow up is that I grew up. Most people under the sound of my voice, they're bothered by what God is doing. That's how you know it's God. If you're doing something and they ain't happy, and they want to question it. What you do? How you? The, someone said you do. Try not say you do. Do you boo? They, they, they said do you be? Child, let me tell you. A cold-hearted person once was a tender-hearted mama. Because sometimes your, even your parents, they're like, I'm, I help you, but yet still you you stick a dagger in my back. And God said, Hold on, I'm doing a good. Let me tell you something. Rob. Folks ain't happy. They ain't happy. That's okay. This ain't just my story. This is 3,000 people under the sound of my voice. This is, they, they're people, they want you to stay. I'm miserable. You be miserable too. I ain't happy with this wife because he ain't happy with his own wife. That's why he had a baby on it because he got issues. But you want to ask me for my marriage and think, if you, see, folk really don't know. They don't know. They don't know. If God turns super religious, opinion, super opinionated people inside out, all the stuff. That's why the word of God says, someone said, woo, the word of God says, get the mold out of your own eye before you get out of somebody else. It simply means, okay, this is hand sanitizer. We all got hand sanitizer, right? Everybody got something. It simply means this is going to be a plant. This is a piece of wood. That means that they walk around with a piece of wood in their eye and they say, wait, hold on, wait a minute. You got something in your eye right there. It's right there. Can you get it out? You got something in your eye. You see it? Get it out. Yeah. You need to take that out your eye. And you be like. Sometimes. Watch this. Look at opinionated people like that. Look at judgmental people like them. Look at them like they a whole mess of stupid. They're a special kind of stupid. Because they got stuff. But too busy focusing on yours. And you just be like. For real? Are you serious? Just look at them. They're a special kind of stupid that only God can fix. And don't get frustrated trying to fix their stupidity. Their stupidity. I'm not ordained to fix judgmental people's folks' stupidity. I'm not ordained for that. I'm a new person. My job is to enjoy my happy and don't go back to jail. That's my happy. Don't let them take you there. God is doing 
Why are y'all laughing? God is doing a new thing. One thing about when God, the Bible says, when the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. liberty. When, God bless you, Pastor, Pastor Claire. When you are liberated through freedom, their opinions don't make you go into that old person. When God liberates you, when God liberates you, that means I don't care what you find and put on Facebook. It's like, I mean, get real black. I love being black. Just, and, look, caress it, y'all. And, it's a special kind of stupid. That's the kind of stupid that God has to fix. I ain't ordained to fix that kind of stupid. I am Pastor Jamila. And every time you click my button, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's a new thing happening in this earth, right in the middle of this pandemic. The new thing is happening, and I guarantee you, you're in the number. I know I am. Michelle. If I told you the stuff, I'm waiting for people to just share their testimony. Kenjin Jones is right. In the middle of the, it, 2020 is the best year of my life. And God said, that's when I do it. I do it when folks need answers. How is this happening at this season? Because it's your time. I love you. Bye-bye.